Amen. The word of God reads as follows, beginning at verse number 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Yes. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Yes. And she said, Truth, Lord, mm -hmm. yet the dogs eat of the crumbs yes. which fall from the master's table. <laughs> then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Yes. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Yes, Amen. We thank God for the blessing that he gives to the readers, the hearers, and the believers of his holy word. You may be seated. Father, I stretch my hands to thee, for there is no other help that I know. For if you were to withdraw yourself from me, Lord, there's no other place that I can go in order to get what it is that I need. And right now, Lord God, I come before you. I need to be filled with your spirit. Because I know that it's the infilling, the empowering, the controlling, the anointing of your spirit that enables us to break the yoke of bondage. Fill me even right now, Lord God, loose me and enable me to preach your word yes, with holy yes, boldness yes. and your God-given authority. Lord God, I pray for that same anointing to fall under uh, upon each person that is under the sound of my voice. I pray that together we might receive your word with gladness. I pray that it goes down into our innermost being. And that it comes alive, comes forth bearing fruit yes. to your glory. Precious Father, I ask you to let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my Lord. You are my strength. You are my rock. You are my redeemer. Yes. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that I pray. And let all of God's children say amen. 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 And from the portion of scripture that we read in your hearing, we just want to call your attention to verse number 28. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Well. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Hallelujah. Amen. And we just want to talk with you for just a few minutes from the subject, faith that won't quit. Well. Faith that won't quit. So today we are going to be talking about a certain Canaanite woman. And in particular, we are talking about the great faith of this Canaanite woman. And for any of us who have spent any time in the study of the Word of God, it is a well-known fact that the people of Israel didn't like the Canaanites. Well. And the Canaanites didn't like the nation of Israel. Well. And that's just putting it mildly. They hated one another. 
The Canaanites were the pagans who lived in the promised land before the nation of Israel came to live there as they were directed by the Lord God. And back in the day, the people of Israel nearly killed off all the Canaanites. But there were some who survived. And even in the times in which Jesus lived and the times in which he walked the dusty shores of Galilee, we find that the nation of Israel was not lacking in people who believed that they should have wiped out the Canaanites. And as we study religious history, we, we can find in the writings, even from Jesus' day, that described the Canaanite people that, that said that they were born with wickedness. They said that they were an accursed race of people. Well. And so, in this scripture passage that we are considering today, it's, it's about the faith of a Canaanite woman. Mm -hmm. It's about the great faith that was exhibited by this Canaanite woman. This would not be such a big deal if our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ went around uh, applying compliments to people loosely and freely, but, but he was a person who would tell things just like it is. What I'm saying is that if he said something, you could take it to the bank. Well. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. His every word is yes and amen, and the same could be said about him today because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when you look at this woman, you see that she was different. You see that she was not only different, but she was unique yes. in two ways. She was the only Gentile woman that Jesus acknowledged. She was the only Gentile woman that Jesus answered. She was the only Gentile woman that Jesus provided a miracle for in Matthew's gospel. And she was the only woman that Jesus said had great faith. On the other hand, it was five times that he reprimanded his disciples for their little faith. Yes. So you, you, you see how special this woman is. She was special because she was a Gentile. She wasn't Jewish. She was special because she was a woman and she was special because Jesus said she was special in saying that she had great faith. Yes. As we study the word of God and even in life, we will find oftentimes that desperate situations lead to genuine or true faith. See, sometimes you, you get down so low that the only place that you can look is up. Yes, Lord. Sometimes you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, a, a place where you come to the end of yourself and realizing that there is nothing in your life that you can do to help yourself. You come to the point of realizing that you need help and God, hallelujah, is the only answer. Yes. Have you ever been there? I'm talking about a place of desperation. Well, That's where we find ourselves in this story about the Canaanite woman. It doesn't believe with us knowing about her faith. 
No, no, no. It begins in her desperate situation. It begins with her desperate cry. Have mercy on me, O Lord, the son of David. Yes. Yes. This is the place in her life where great faith first got its start. Hallelujah. See, that's where her great faith began. Uh, see, if, if I never had a problem, hallelujah, I wouldn't have known that God could solve them. But through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend upon his word. Can I get a witness in this house? Yes. Yes, this Canaanite woman is a woman whose name we don't know. Well, All we know her is as the Canaanite woman. It's a woman whose name that has never been spoken. Mm -hmm. We just know her as the Canaanite woman, the woman of Canaan, who was in a desperate situation. Yes. She had a daughter who she described as being grievously vexed with a devil. We don't know exactly what that meant. It could have meant that she was suffering from, from some violently insane behavior. We in our vernacular today might say, well, she was acting crazy. She wasn't acting normal. Like the man who lived without clothes among the tombs uh, and who would cut himself with stones in the eighth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Or maybe she was like uh, the, the one who had uh, seizures. You know, the little boy who had seizures and who had often cast himself in the fire. We find that in Matthew chapter 17. Well. But we do know that whatever was going on in her life, uh, her mother was desperate to find a solution. Uh, she was desperate for her daughter to be whole, to be made healed. Uh, she was desperate for her daughter to be freed from that terrible condition that was put on her as she said by the devil. Yes. It was while she was in her desperate situation that she was led, hallelujah, to a place of hope. Yes. I said a place of hope, not a, a hope in fake cures, not a hope in so-called remedies that she might have tried before her. Her hope was not in the best medical advice of the day. Her hope was not coming from the best physical and mental doctors of the day. But her hope, hallelujah, came in the God of Israel. Her hope was in the Messiah. Her hope was in God's chosen one. Her hope was in the one that she called Lord. Her hope was in Jesus. Her hope was in the anointed one of Israel, the great physician, the one who can do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. I'm talking about the one who has never lost the case. I'm talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. The hope, the hope that this woman had led to a faith without shame. It led to a faith without boundaries. It led to what Jesus called, hallelujah, great faith. Church, we need to have a faith like that. We need to have a faith that Jesus called a great faith. See, many times uh, we can be afraid to let our faith be known. Sometimes uh, we are concerned about what others might think. Our friends, our family members, our co-workers, uh, hallelujah. We don't want to stand out. We want to just be blending into the crowd. See, sometimes we just want to be polite. We just want to be politically correct and not talk about God and what we believe and have the faith in what he can do. But I'm here to tell you today that this woman was different. She lived out a faith that came from having nothing left to lose. 
her desperate situation led to a desperate faith. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes it's in those desperate situations that you just got to throw caution to the wind. <laughs> That's what great faith does. Great faith says, I, I know, hallelujah, that he can do just uh, what I need him to do. Faith says, I just believe that he is able. So what did she do? She approached the disciples and their leader on the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And she screamed out from a distance, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. Oh, hallelujah. She knows who he is. And she acknowledges him as who he is. He is Lord. Hallelujah. He is the son of God. He is the promised Messiah. He is God come in the flesh. And it's his mercy, hallelujah, that she begs for. Why does she ask him for mercy? Because he is a great and merciful high priest. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that he ministers mercy to anybody who needs it. All you got to do is call out to him for his mercy. Lord, have mercy mm -hmm. on me. We all need his mercy. Yes, Lord. His mercy suits our case. And he will not withhold his mercy from us. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's worth shouting about. He will not withhold his mercy from us. Mm -hmm. Look at that woman. She doesn't plead with worth. She doesn't plead with entitlement. But she comes to him depending yes. on his mercy. Yes. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. As parents, church, we need to pray for our children. We need to be sincere in our prayers for them. Mm -hmm. Lord, I have a son, I have a daughter. He or she is being led captive by the devil at his will. Lord, I'm praying for you to help them. Yes. Lord, we need you to bring them to yourself. Hallelujah. We need to be praying for them to be brought to Jesus by faith in our prayers because Jesus all by himself can help. Hallelujah. Yes. That woman in her great faith she didn't just shout. The Bible says she screamed. She cried out as desperate as the faith that she had that Jesus was the one, that Jesus was the only one who could make a difference in her daughter's life. Yes. She didn't care that the people around her didn't approve of what she was doing. She didn't care that the disciples didn't approve of what she was doing. She didn't care that the culture of her time didn't approve of what she was doing. She didn't care that as a woman that she shouldn't have been approaching a man and talking to him. She didn't care that she was standing out like a sore, sore thumb. She didn't care that she was doing what she wasn't supposed or permitted to do. She just didn't care. She just didn't care. She didn't care. Hallelujah. She cared more about her daughter and her daughter's well-being yes. than what the people thought about her. Mm -hmm. That's what faith yes. is all about. Yes. It's about taking all of your cares and casting them <laughs> on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because you know that he cares for you. The only real care she had was for the welfare and the well-being 
of her daughter. The only care that she had was for the healing of her daughter. Yes. And she cast all of that on Jesus. Mm -hmm. She had the faith of a desperate mother. She had faith without shame. She had faith without restriction. She had faith without boundaries and nothing but faith in Jesus. That's all that she had. Hallelujah. Yes, nothing in my hand I bring. Only to Jesus mm -hmm. I claim. Yes. That's great faith. And the Canaanite woman is in the Bible to cause us to think about our faith. Well, it's in the Bible for us to think about the awesomeness of our God. Yes. Great faith comes out in desperate situations. Great faith rises out of confidence in Jesus. Come on, preacher. Good. And as I close, let me say this. The Canaanite woman's faith was without shame. It was without restrictions. Well. It was without boundaries. Because she knew who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Even as a woman from Canaan, she knew right. who Jesus was. The Bible says that the devils believe and they tremble. Mm -hmm. Even the devils know who Jesus is. Yes, but she knew who Jesus was. She knew that he was her only help. She didn't care what others thought or expected from her. She decided that she was going to turn it over yes. to Jesus because she knew, hallelujah, that he was able to work it out. She demonstrated faith without fear. She cried out, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Yes. But look at the text. Look at the text. The Bible says in this text that as she cried out to him, Jesus didn't say a word. There was complete silence. Have you ever been in that place yes, sir. where you're praying and you don't get an answer? There's nothing but silence. There's no answer from the Lord. Here in this text, it says that Jesus answered not a word. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. But Jesus answered, not a word. And on top of that, the disciples were telling him, uh, send her away. Yes. Send her away because it's embarrassing to us to see her acting like that. Well. And you know what people are saying? As they are seeing her following us around and crying out like this, Lord, send her away. And then when he did speak, <laughs> what did he say? He said, I'm sorry. But I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And I'm sorry, but you're not an Israelite. You're a Canaanite. So I can't help you. That is not what that Canaanite woman wanted to hear. Think about it, think about it. Sometimes when you pray, well, the answer that you are hoping for is not the answer 
that you get. Amen. What do you do in those situations? <laughs> that woman didn't give up. <laughs> Look at the text. Look at the text. We see something more about her faith. Not only does she have faith without shame, but she has faith without fears. She was not afraid of Jesus, and she was not afraid of his disciples. As a matter of fact, she came back, and when she came back, she came back in total worship with nothing to lose. She showed her dependence on Jesus without shame, without fear. She came to Jesus as an act of worship, and then she asked again, Lord... Help me. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus. Woo! Lord, help me. Yes. But it didn't work. Again, Jesus came back with an answer that she didn't want to hear. He said to her, it's, listen to this. It's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dog. He was calling her a dog. Listen, listen, listen. Here is the lesson for us to take away from this story. This is the kind of faith that we need to have. A faith that is not afraid to pray and ask God something because we might be told no. This woman didn't let Jesus' lack of a positive response stop her. No, 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 no. We need faith that won't quit. That woman, she demonstrated great faith. That's faith that won't quit. That's faith without shame. That's faith without restrictions. That's faith without boundaries. That's faith without fear. She showed faith that wouldn't quit. She showed faith that knows who God is. Hallelujah. A faith that knows that God is real. A faith that knows God will reward those as Hebrews 6 says, who diligently seek him because they understand that without faith, you cannot please God. Amen. Amen. Great faith. Yes. A faith that won't quit. And she came to Jesus and worshiped, bowing down in humble submission well, yeah. before him. Yes, sir. And he told her, Something very strange. Yes. He said, it's not meat. It's not fit. It's not a good thing to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Everybody knew what Jesus meant. The disciples knew. The woman knew. What he was saying is that it isn't good to take the blessing meant for Israel and give it to the Gentiles. Yes, Lord. And those who were around probably agreed and said, Jesus is right. He's right. We should take care of, of our own. Amen. Well. But this Canaanite woman knew the heart of God. She knew the heart of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And she said, Lord, as always, yes, you are right. But even the dogs ah. get to eat the crumbs ah. yes, sir. off the, master. the master's yes, table. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. Hey, hallelujah. Yes. In other words, on her face in worship at the feet of Jesus, the woman said, Lord, if that's all that you're offering is the crumbs of your blessing, then I'll take the crumbs. Hallelujah. Hey! Little as much when it comes from the master's hand. Hallelujah. I'll take the crumbs. Yes, sir. I came to you, Lord, asking for your mercy, but I'll take the crumbs of your mercy. I take the crumbs of your love. I'll take the crumbs of your grace. I'll take the crumbs of your compassion. Oh, yes, Lord, give me the crumbs. Yes, sir. If that's all you got, I'll take it. Yes, I'll take it. Hey, hallelujah. 
I'll take your kindness. I'll take your patience. I'll take your goodness. I'll take your gentleness. I'll take whatever it is, oh God, that comes from you. I'll take the crowns. Hey, hallelujah. I'll take whatever it is that I can receive from you because I know that everything that comes from you is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, I believe that your mercies are new every morning. I know, hallelujah, that your blessings are out for the whole world, hallelujah. You allow your sun and your rain to fall on the just as well as the unjust. I know your blessings are so great that I will gladly take the crumbs. And with your crumbs, hallelujah, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, Woo, that's great faith. That's great faith. Faith yes. that won't quit. Faith that finds encouragement even in the midst of discouragement. Mm. Mm. Look at the scene. Look at That's it. Good. Jesus reached down well. and he grabbed her by the hands. Mm -hmm. Helped her to her feet. Looked into her eyes well. and said great is your faith woman. Yes, your daughter Ah. is healed. Yeah. Great faith. Yes. Faith that won't quit. That's the type of faith that asks and seeks and knocks. That's the kind of faith that won't quit. That's called persistent faith. Yes. That's what we have here in this text of scripture. It's a lesson on persistent faith. Faith that won't quit. The disciples and those around that day got a living lesson yes, sir. on faith that won't quit. Mm -hmm. They saw great faith come alive in that Canaanite woman. Yes. They saw faith that didn't quit. Faith that wasn't ashamed to seek after Jesus. Well. Faith that wasn't afraid to keep on asking and Keep on seeking and keep on knocking, even in the face of no response, yeah. even in the face of an indifferent response. See, great faith is mustard seed faith, faith that won't quit, faith to speak to the mountains in our lives and tell them to be removed and cast into the sea. And as long as we don't doubt, Jesus said, it will happen. Faith that won't give up. Hallelujah. Faith that just keeps on keeping on, keep on keeping on, keep on believing, keep on trusting, keep on holding to God's unchanging hands. And before you know it, what you prayed for, what you asked for, it will come to pass. If all I get is the crumbs, that will be enough. Yes, sir. If they're falling from well, my master's table, yeah. let us pray. Father, we thank you. Mm. We praise you, we worship you, we glorify, we magnify, we lift up, we exalt, we extol, we glorify, and we love your holy and your righteous name. Great mm -hmm. and marvelous are your works. Yes, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord God. Yes for the Canaanite woman <laughs> and the great faith that you said she exhibited in her life that brought about the healing of her daughter. And Lord God, help us to learn the things that you would have us to learn from your word. And then, Lord God, not just to learn them, but to Implement, implement them and uh, apply them yes. in our lives. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let us stand without faith. It's impossible.